स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया in the year 1925 reported an early hominin fossil from the lime quarry at the tong place in the cape province of south africa and this fossil which he discovered consisted of front part of the skull and the lower jaw of a 6 year old child who became known as tong child later on why we called them as tong child because it was the fossil of a child and found at the tong area of south africa this was named by raymond dodd as australopithecus africanus the adult form of australopithecine skulls which were around 3 to 2.5 billion years ago were also discovered by the year 1940 along with the child uh, specimen which was discovered by dart in the year 1925 the teeth brain vertebral column and the pelvic girdle were of human like in all these specimen so it gave us a great clue about the transitional form which were more of hominin as compared to the apes moving ahead let's talk about the australopithecus sediba this is the latest australopithecian discovered it was published in the year 2010 australopithecus sediba is distinct from but still closely related to both homo habilis and australopithecus africanus so it was somewhere between these two that is australopithecus africanus which we just discussed and the next coming specimen that is homo habilis therefore it is likely to be a transitional form in the emergence of homo or the human genus it dates back to around 1.95 to 1.78 million years ago the fossils of australopithecus sediba were discovered in the malapa area of south africa and this is most complete hominin uncovered they had small brain very long arms and body form of a chimpanzee but fingers thumb and the regions of brain were more like of humans so again it was showing both the characters of apes as well as the humans australopithecus sediba has been discovered by lee rogers berger and his 9 year old son that is matthew berger here you can see matthew berger displaying the fossil he found and basically he was working with his father who was leading a group of paleoanthropologists for excavation the lee rogers berger and on the extreme right side you see a restructured or reconstructed skeleton of australopithecus sediba moving ahead we have so far discussed gracile australopithecines now let us talk about robust australopithecines and here we are going to discuss two specimen particularly that is australopithecus robustus and australopithecus boisei Australopithecus robustus was also known as Paranthropus robustus. It dates back to around 2 to 1 or 0.6 million years ago. And the first discovered robust australopithecine in the year 1932 was from the cradle of humankind again in the area of South Africa. The average brain size of australopithecus robustus was around 530 cubic cm and their overall body weight was around 30 to 40 kg 
with an average height ranging from 1.1 to 1.3 meters. They had a very thick jaw with small incisors and canines and they had large molar like premolars and very large molars. They had an upright posture, a bipedal locomotion mode and a human like pelvic girdles. Here in the image you can see a female that is on to the left side and a male specimen skull of Australopithecus robustus here. Moving ahead, the next is Australopithecus boisei. Again, it was a robust kind of Australopithecian. It was also known as Paranthropus boisei. From the early Pleistocene of East Africa, around 2.3 to 1.34 or 1 million years ago. The Paranthropus boisei or Australopithecus boisei is the most robust of all the robust Australopithecians which have been discovered so far. It had the brain size of approximate 410 to 530 cubic centimeter and the average weight was around 50 to 80 kilograms with height ranging from 1.2 to 1.4 meters. They had prominent sagittal crest, a very large face, small brain case with a very large bro ridge and bipedal locomotion. All these features of skull you can see in this image of the skull of Paranthropus or Australopithecus boisei here. They had prominent sagittal crest, large face, small brain case with very large bro ridge. Australopithecus boisei specimen was discovered by Mary Leakey in the year 1959 and it was described by her husband Lewis Leakey almost a month later and you can see the image of both of them here. Moving ahead from Australopithecines to the genus Homo which particularly refers to humans. So Australopithecines were ape men which was having characters of both apes and men. Now we are moving towards more human like characters within the genus Homo. They first appeared in fossil record in the East Africa at around 2.5 million years ago. Their size was similar to Australopithecines but they had larger brain and smaller molar tooth. The various species of Homo illustrate adaptive radiations in response to natural selection. So different kinds of selection pressure were there because of which they radiated in different areas, they inhabited different areas, so they showed this adaptive radiation phenomena. Let us start with Homo rudolfensis and Homo habilis which is the most primitive Homo uh, species in the genus Homo. Homo rudolfensis dates back to around 2.4 to 1.8 million years ago and Homo habilis between 2 to 1.6 million years ago. They were also called as handyman or the first tool maker homin. Now this is very interesting here. Here we are introducing the tool making capabilities of the uh, in the history of human evolution. They had the brain size ranging from 500 to 800 cubic centimeter. Again the bipedal locomotion was there with upright posture. The femur bone was longer and relatively straight. They showed first side sign of chin. Remember before that the chin was missing. Molars were smaller than the Australopithecines but still considerably larger than the modern humans. So they were moving towards more of human forms but still they were having not exactly just like modern humans. Homo ergaster is again an African species which is why they are also called as African Homo erectus. Most Homo ergaster fossils have been found along the shores of the lake 
Turkana in the in the Kenya. Taller and leaner with brain capacity of about 750 to 1100 cubic centimeter and the larger body size than Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis. So they have changed from Homo habilis and Homo rudolfensis, the earlier forms, in the form of their body size has increased, their brain capacity has increased, they have become taller and leaner. They used fire, that is another interesting tool uh, which we are seeing here that they have started using, and large hand axes of Arculean type. So they started using tools which can be of various types, including the fire, which were missing in the Australopithecines. Here in the image, you can see a 1.6 million old, year old skull of Homo agaster, which was discovered in the year 1975 at Kubifora in the Kenya. Here, another interesting skeleton, just like Lucy, which you saw in case of Australopithecines, in case of Homo, we have around 1.6 million year old Nariocotome skeleton, which is again the most complete fossil of a juvenile male Homo ergaster. So, similar to the Lucy in case of Australopithecine, which was also a complete skeleton, here in the Homo ergaster we have Nariocotome skeleton, which is around 1.6 million year old specimen. Moving ahead, the Next species in Homo genus is Homo erectus and the word in itself means the upright man. It was first discovered in Java but later discovered in China, Europe, Africa etc. The average cranial capacity or the brain capacity was around 546 to 1251 cubic centimeter. The body size of Homo erectus was approximate 1.46 to 1.85 meters. They exhibited reduced sexual dimorphism just like in the modern humans. If you see the earlier forms or even the Australopithecines, there were great uh, sexual dimorphism in male and female in all these species. But in case of Homo erectus, it has reduced to a great extent. They are associated with Aculean tools. Now in Homo erectus, there are two main categories which we need to discuss that is Java man and the packing man. The Java man is also called as Homo erectus erectus or Pithecanthropus erectus. The fossils of these Java men were found in the year 1891 by Eugene Du Bois on the bank of Solo River in Java. And here you can see the image of Eugene Du Bois. The cranial capacity of Java man was approximate 940 cubic centimeter. And the characteristics which define Java man are low and slanting forehead, prognathous face, heavy bony eyebrow ridges, heavy teeth, and the smaller molars and here you can see the reconstruction of skull of a java man in the year 1922. The three main fossils of java man which have been found in the year 1891 to 92 has been shown here which are the skull caps which is here the molar and the thigh bone and each of them has been shown here with different angle. So these are the specimen of Java man and this is the reconstructed skull of Java man. Another interesting specimen is packing man which is also called as Homo erectus pachyensis and it is also called as Pithecanthropus pachyensis or Synanthropus pachyensis. The fossils have been discovered by Davidson Black which you can see here in the year 1929 to 1937 from the caves near Peking. Peking is the place which is now in the Beijing of China. 
here you can see us again a reconstruction of packing man at the Gothenburg Natural History Museum. It was very similar to Java man with the heavy bony eyebrow ridges, low slanting forehead and chinless face. But its cranial capacity was much larger with an average of around 1075 cubic centimeter. So besides all uh, uh, the other characteristics, the difference lies with the cranial capacity between the packing man and the Java man. The Homo erectus had some specific skills that made it stand apart from its predecessors. And these are skills as an efficient tool maker, skills as a cooperative game hunter and they learn to use fire. So these three characteristics in terms of tool making, in terms of cooperative nature in game hunting and the use of fire made Homo erectus very special in the evolutionary history of humans. Moving ahead from Homo erectus, we came to the Homo sapiens. Homo erectus was succeeded by Homo sapiens who were described by different names earlier but now they have been grouped under the Homo sapiens. Earlier they were having different names like Homo heidelbergensis, Homo neanderthalensis, Cro-Magnon man or EEMH. Let us try to have a brief idea about these forms. Homo heidelbergensis is commonly called as Heidelberg man. Its fossils were discovered from Swenscombe which is an area in the England and Stenheim which is present in Germany and it dates back to around 2 lakh million 2 lakh years ago. The brain volume and other features were actually the intermediate between the Homo erectus and the Homo sapiens that is the modern man and these Homo heidelbergensis are regarded as the ancestor of Neanderthal man. So moving ahead from Heidelbergensis we come to Homo neanderthalensis. Homo neanderthalensis or which are also called as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis they are named after the valley that is Neander valley which is present in Germany in which the first identified specimen was found for these Homo neanderthalensis. The characteristics which define neanderthals are their short limbs and very stocky bodies. They had a robust ant body and the large brain which was of an average size of around 1400 to 1500 cc that is which is much higher even from the modern humans and they used mosterian tools. Now here you can see the cranial features of modern man and Neanderthal which have been compared. So you can see the difference in terms of brain case shape, difference in terms of the forehead, the difference in terms of the brow ridges which is here you can find very much prominent, here you don't find. Brain case is much larger here, even the brain capacity in terms of the uh, brain size was much higher in Neanderthal. The nasal bone projection is also different. Cheekbone angulation is different. Chin is very prominent in modern human as compared to the Neanderthals. And even the occipital contour is different. So these are the major differences which you can see in the skull or particularly the cranial features of modern humans and the Neanderthal man. Here you can see some of the tools that have been used by these Neanderthals. So they were very uh, habitual of using tools and they were quite expert in them. Now moving ahead, the third specimen or species is the Cro-Magnon man. In fact, it is not a species. It is named as European Early Modern Humans or abbreviated as EEMH. And it is a term 
for the earliest populations of anatomically modern humans in Europe during the Upper Paleolithic. The term EEMH is equivalent to the Cro-Magnon man or the Cro-Magnons in general, which is a term derived from the Cro-Magnon row shelter in the southwestern France. And this is the place where the first EEMH were found in the year 1868. Louis Lartet in the year 1869 proposed Homo sapiens fossils as the systematic name for Cro-Magnon man. And the year 1921, W.K. Gregory proposed the subspecies name as Homo sapiens Cro-Magnonsis. So, you can see the term EEMH is generally preferred over the common name Cro-Magnon which has no formal taxonomical status or it refers neither to a species nor to a subspecies or a archaeological phase or culture. So Cro-Magnon man is a very general term. It has been just given because of the place where these fossils have been found but otherwise they are now EEMH. Now moving ahead from the Homo sapiens we come to the modern humans and the modern humans have been given the name as Homo sapiens sapiens. If you see the major characteristics in terms of evolution, the average brain size of modern human is around 1350 cubic centimeter. They have sharply rising forehead which is very prominently visible for all of us. And the eyebrow ridges are either very small or even altogether absent. Our chin is very much prominent. So that is one character which we have not seen in many of the earlier forms. And we have very gracile skeleton. Now one of the interesting feature is about the tools which have been used by the members of Homo genus. And these tools have been used particularly by Homo and not by the Australopithecines. So Homo habilis had old one tools. Homo agaster and Homo erectus used Arthurian tools. Both of them were present at different times when though. Homo neanderthalensis and Homo sapiens which were there at around 2 lakh uh, years ago used Mustrarian tools and the Homo sapiens at around 90,000 years ago used Paleolithic tools and here you can see a rough image of all these type of tools which we just mentioned that is older one tools are like this, Archerian tools and the Mustrarian tools. Now besides this so far which we have discussed is called as a biological evolution of humans or in other words you can say the paleontological because so far we have been discussing most of the fossils that we have found and up to some extent we initially discussed about the molecular evidences of evolution. So these two are basically um, the biological evolution of human but this is one part of human evolution. Another interesting part is cultural evolution of humans. So it is not only the biological or physiological or anatomical or the paleontological things which have evolved, even the cognitive skills, the culture, the communication, all these things have also evolved in humans and all these come under cultural evolution of humans which is another unique characteristics which has occurred in humans as compared to other animals or the primates as well. So if you talk about these cultural evolution in modern humans, we have evolved a very pronounced, a very uh, elaborate communication, symbolizing and the language skills, which is not that strong in other primates. Besides that, there is a cultural revolution. Also, the scientific revolution which has taken place in humans is missing in other primates and also besides using various tools we have seen the agricultural revolution as well 
so producing and storing and all those kind of revolutionary steps that has taken place in humans that is missing in other primates so on one hand it is the biological evolution that has taken place and on the other hand it is the cultural evolution and the difference lies the biological evolution is within the organisms as such and it is very slow whereas cultural evolution is at the level of a community basically and it occurs very fast as compared to the biological evolution now with this let us come to the summary part of our uh, lecture today in today's lecture we started with a brief introduction about what do we mean the primates how do we categorize these primates what all it comprises of and so on and then we jumped towards human evolution and within human evolution we discussed the timeline that has been followed in the human evolution we talked about the various sites or the locations from where the major fossils have been discovered or obtained which have supported our understanding about human evolution so the location of fossils we discussed and then we talked about the models of origin which include the single origin and multiple origin hypothesis or noah's ark and the candelbera model which we discussed we confirmed that it is the single origin hypothesis in the africa which is most supported by various molecular evidences and these molecular evidences were mitochondrial dna which was called as mitochondrial eve and the y chromosome dna which was named as y chromosome adam besides that even the autosomal regions also supported the single region hypothesis and it predicted even the time when these migration of humans took place across different continents after that we discussed various trends of human evolution where we discussed the major changes that has taken place in human evolution which included mainly the bipedalism reduction of sexual dimorphism increase in the cranial capacity or encephalization increase in the body size opposable thumb thumb development and so on so there were number of trends which have been seen in the history of human evolution and after that we discussed various transitional forms in human evolution we started with earliest hominin fossils and then we particularly focused on two major groups one was called as australopithecines where again there were two categories one was the gracile type and another one was robust type we took examples of both to understand how the history evolved and these australopithecines were commonly called as ape man or the southern apes basically then we moved ahead to homo genus and in homo genus we discussed starting from homo habilis and we went to homo sapiens sapiens that is the modern human beings besides that this was all regarding the biological evolution then we briefly talked about what do we mean by the cultural evolution of human beings so besides biological evolution in terms of culture in terms of communication or language humans have evolved a lot and which is also a prominent part whenever we talk about human evolution so with this i would like you to suggest these three books one is by ridley on evolution another one is strick burgess evolution by hall and hall crimson and third is evolution by douglas j, j. futiyama besides that also there are number of books and very good websites which you can refer for understanding human evolution through internet and so on and with that thank you so much